ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وكرهوا ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبعث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والالهم ان الله كان عليكم وكيلا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وكلوا كل شيء يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فاك فازن فوزن عظيم اما بعد فنستك حديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير حديث حديث محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور مدقاتها وكل مدقه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار in one translation indeed all praise belongs to Allah the most high we thank him and we seek his aid and we seek his refuge and seek forgiveness from our evil, the evil of ourselves and from our bad actions whoever Allah guides and there's no one who can mislead him and whoever Allah causes to go astray then there's no one to guide him and i bear witness again we bear witness that there's no deity except Allah who is unique and without partners in him they want to say Muhammad is his worshiper and his messenger and the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his family and his companions and those who follow them with good intentions until the day of judgment oh you who believe fear Allah as he should be feared and don't die except as muslims again oh you who believe fear Allah as he should be feared and don't die except as muslims and oh mankind be careful of your duty to your Rabb who created you from a single soul and from it created its mate and from the two of them we spread forth many men and women and be careful of your duty to Allah whom you demand your mutual rights and be careful of your duty to the wombs that bore you indeed Allah is our rakib over you or you who believe fear Allah and always speak the truth he will cause your deeds to be beneficial and he will forget for you your sins and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger then he has truly achieved a tremendous accomplishment indeed the best speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the most evil of all affairs a newly invented matter which has no precedent in Islam and indeed all innovations are astray and each astray is in the hell fire o oh allah save us from it o oh allah accept our dua a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim the immigrants are given the highest honor and praise for having made a great sacrifice in the cause of allah He says and those who immigrate for the cause of Allah after they have been wronged we will surely settle them in this world in a good place but the reward of the hereafter is greater if they could only know and that's from the Quran in Abdullah ibn Amr radiyallahu anhu reported that a man asked O messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam which immigration is best the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to immigrate away from that which Allah disapproves immigration is of two kinds the immigration of the resident and the bedouin as for the immigration of the bedouin he responds when he is called and he obeys when he is commanded as for the immigration of the resident its trial is more severe and its reward greater and when we look at the word hijra which translates loosely to immigration your migration rather and we always hear the word specifically in the media today the word immigrant uh, we hear the use of this word again people who leave situations that are oppressive whether politically or economically for a place of refuge or safety and another type of hijra or migration is that of the resident the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned again to leave that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with to dwell in a spiritual space that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a lot of times you don't even have to go anywhere to do that you don't have to move physically to be able to make that type of hijra spiritual hijra Abu Sa'id radiyallahu anhu reported a Bedouin came to the prophet peace be upon him and asked about the immigration the 
Prophet said to him, Woe to you, the matter of immigration is difficult. Have you got some camels? The man said, Yes. The Prophet said, Do you pay its charity? The man said, Yes. The Prophet said, Do you let them be used by others? The man said, Yes. Do you milk them on the proper day? The man said, Yes. The Prophet said, Then do good deeds beyond the sea. Verily, Allah will never disregard any of your deeds. And one interpretation of this particular hadith is that, again, the man sought to migrate physically. But there's a saying that they say that, then do good deeds beyond the sea. In other words, just continue to do good deeds where you are. You know, the man, he wanted to make the hijrah. But the Prophet, وسلم, when he did the assessment, what did he say? Are you charitable? Are you generous with your property? Do you treat your animals well? And again, do good deeds beyond the sea, for verily Allah would never disregard any of your deeds. And again, whether you go or stay, he was saying you will receive a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if the man had answered differently, then most likely permission to make hijrah would have been given. And again, my understanding of this particular hadith is that if your environment makes it easy for you to do wrong and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you want to seek a geographical cure you know, for your sickness. But if your environment, or you're able to practice this deen in your environment and you're able to do good and be charitable, then stay. You know, but for many people, they may not be able to live in a certain environment. They may not be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not about, again, you uh, adjusting the Islam to the ignorance that you bring to Islam. It's about allowing the Islam to basically be, uh, dispel our level of jahiliya or ignorance. We have to be able to allow the Islam to be a change agent. It is like a spiritual antibiotic, just like when you have an infection and you take the antibiotics to get rid of the infection. Prayer, fasting, charity is a form of an antibiotic, of spiritual antibiotic. It helps us to become different people. They're change agents. Abu Sa'id al-Qudri reported that the Prophet وسلم, said, there was a man from among a nation before you who killed 99 people and then made an inquiry about the most learned person on earth. And he was directed to a monk. He came to him and told him that he had killed 99 people and asked if there was any chance for repentance uh, to be accepted. And he replied in the negative, and the man killed him also, making it 100. He then asked about the most learned man on earth, and he was directed to a scholar. And he told, he told him that he had killed 100 people and asked him, was there any chance for repentance to be accepted? He replied in the affirmative and asked, who stands between you and repentance? Go to such and such a land, there you will find people devoted to prayer and worship of Allah. Join them in worship and do not come back to your land except um, in your land because it's an evil place. So he went away and, and hardly had he covered half the distance when death overtook him. And there was a dispute between the angels of mercy and the angels of torment. The angels of mercy pleaded, this man has come with repenting heart to Allah. And the angels of punishment argued, he never did a virtuous deed in his life. <laughs> then there appeared another angel in the form of a human being, and the contending angels agreed to make him the arbiter between them. He said, measure the distance between the two lands. He will be considered, he will be considered belonging to the land to which he is nearer. They measured and found him closer to the land of piety, where he intended to go. And so the angels of mercy collected his soul. And that's from Sahih Hadith. Bukhari and Muslim. And in one narration of this particular hadith, it is said that he was really closer to the land in which he left. But Allah in his infinite mercy stretched the earth so that he could be closer to the land in which he was going to. So that's how much mercy Allah has for us, brothers and sisters. So we have to be of those who are seeking his mercy continuously. Make the spiritual migration Get away from the things that pull us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to be of those who are 
change agents. We are the healers in this society. In this society, I believe it's going to go through turmoil and there's going to be lots of oppression coming forth. And as Muslims, we have to be prayed up or we are be of those who will be preyed on by the predators. So we have to start to use this time that Allah has given us so that we can show that Islam is a complete way of life. It is not just a religion. It is not just a religion, it is a complete way of life. You can't speak something wise of a hadith or a Quran and then use profanity in the next sentence. You know, you can't talk about how you know, heavy you are as a Muslim, but you're still smoking weed. You're still drinking alcohol. You're still engaging in all sorts of, 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 of behaviors that are inconsistent with what a Muslim should be about. You can't be of those who are talking and backbiting against brothers and sisters and still ask for the mercy of Allah. So we have to basically make changes, and change can be intrinsic or extrinsic. Intrinsic change is when you make the internal change. Extrinsic change is when you make an external change. In other words, you can make a geographical change or you can change inside. If I've said anything which is inconsistent with what Allah has given us and what the Prophet peace be upon him has taught us to take responsibility for that, and if I've said anything which we have gained some new insight, as always, all praise belongs to Allah. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له المفتوح والأنوار على كل شيء قدير. And again, the lesson in the story of the man who killed 99 people, and I don't think anybody in this room has killed that many people. Its environmental factors can weigh heavily on our behaviors. You know, I'm a, I'm a therapist by profession, and in our field, they call it nature versus nurture. Nature versus nurture. In other words, what behaviors that you come into this world with, you know, you can't help that. That's, that's your genetic inheritance. Just like, you know, if you're from a small town and you, you see somebody and, and they see you and they say, well, you are a Smith, aren't you? You are, you are a Muhammad, aren't you? you are, they can look at you genetically. They can see the, the resemblance. You know, but just like physical resemblance can be transmitted genetically, Behaviors all can also be transmitted genetically. It's a known factor, for instance, uh, that addiction, depression, schizophrenia, anxiety disorders, and anger can be transmitted through the genes. You know, they did a study years ago called the twin study. It was a cruel study, but they, they were twins who were born of alcoholic parents and twins who were born of non-alcoholic parents. And to a T, what happened, the twins who were born with alcoholic parents, a high percentage of them became alcoholic. And the twins who were born of non-alcoholic parents, they were raised, you know, again, in a different household. And then they didn't have the, the alcoholism. So the genetic, what's called a genetic predisposition is real. And so if we have certain characteristics that will cause us to engage in behaviors that's inconsistent with Islam, at times we need to make, again, a geographical cure, a trans transition. But we, once we acknowledge it, if we can heal it in our present environment, then you know, we want to heal it. You know, again, we don't have control over the things that we come into this world with, but we do. We do have control over, again, you know, what, we, uh, you know, what we pick up in this world. And if relocating physically can help you in your worship, then do that. And it's a, you know, I remember um, when I became Muslim, I became a Muslim in 1978. And a year later, you know, again, my soul was longing for something else. And, and again, you know, I, I came to Atlanta, you know, for, I was going to come here for a week. I'm still here, you know. So the thing, what I witnessed is that there were brothers and sisters striving to establish community and communal worship. There were brothers and sisters striving to raise their families, you know, from in, in, a, in, 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 a, in, a, in a society which is inconsistent with many of the concepts of Islam, but we established a geographical area where we could raise our children. And that was impressive to me. Again, I only came for a week and 
over 40 years still here. And what we have to do is not only maintain the, what we have, but specifically our young brothers and sisters, if you're traveling throughout the earth, if you're traveling throughout the country, if you're moving away from this type of environment, then make sure that you establish community wherever you are. Because again, wherever you are, you're going to take you with you. You know, if you don't change inside, if you don't change intrinsically, it don't matter where you go. It don't matter where you go. So the intrinsic change, that, that, that has to start. And then if the environment becomes distasteful to you, then you might need to do the geographical change. But if your dean becomes so sufficient that you can stay in your environment and continue to do the work and continue to do the dollars, the prophet peace be upon him, he assessed the man. He said, you're doing good here. You don't need to go anywhere. You know, so, but if you recognize that there's too many demons pointing or pulling on you, then sometimes we have to move. But first of all, we have to move inside. Get rid of the negative habits, the bad foods. Get rid of the, the cigarette smoking. Get rid of the, the drug usage. You know, again, you know, as the prophet peace be upon him talked about how when you basically engaging in intoxicants, your prayer is not accepted. And so you have Muslims trying to promote the usage of weed, trying to again turn Islam into something in which they're comfortable with, as opposed to engaging in the discomfort of righteousness. Because being righteous sometimes is like putting your left shoe on your right foot and your right, right, right shoe on your left foot, and you have to get used to it. You know, so these are some of the things I want to impart to you, brothers and sisters, that we have to make the necessary migration away from the things that are inconsistent with Islam. Because our Islam will truly be tested. Our Islam will be tested in such a way that I can't even describe at this time. Because you have so many things coming down the pike, politically, economically, and socially. And we have to basically be of those who enjoy the right and forbid the wrong. Because what does Allah say? You're the best people among mankind. That's your job description. You're the best people among mankind. But the qualifier is you enjoy the right and you forbid the wrong. So if you're not doing that, then you might not be the best. You might be a beast. You know, so we want to be the best people among mankind. I remember hearing a saying in one of the recovery programs, the 12-step programs. They say you have to, in order to have real change, you have to change your playgrounds and change your playmates. Change your playgrounds and change your playmates. And when we are called on the Day of Judgment to account for our actions, we won't have any excuses, brothers and sisters. We won't have any excuses. As the law says, you know, when the angels take the souls of those who died and sin against their souls, they say, indeed, those whom the angels take in death while wronging themselves, the angels will say, in what condition were you? They will say, we were oppressed in the land. The angels will say, was not the earth of Allah spacious enough for you to immigrate therein? For those, their refuge is hell. And evil, it is as a destination. Again, Atab bin Abi Rabba reported, I visited Aisha radiallahu anha with uh, Ubay ibn Umar and to ask her about immigration. Aisha radiallahu anha said, there is no immigration today. One of, the, one of the believers would flee with his religion to Allah Almighty and to his messenger, peace, peace be upon him, fearing persecution for it. Today, Allah has made Islam prevail, and a believer may worship his Lord wherever he wishes, whether there is, no, there is only jihad and good intentions. And Amartya said, if one is able to manifest the religion in a land among the land of unbelief, then it has become by it a land of Islam, for the establishment of religion in it is better than traveling away from it in hopes that others will enter it into Islam. And again, the spiritual hijra means to leave that which Allah is displeased with with that which he is pleased with. And again, it's not too late. It's, it's too late. 
when the angel of death comes to extract your soul. The ones who have believed, immigrated, and strived in the cause of Allah with their wealth and their lives are greater in rank in the sight of Allah. And it is those who are the attainers of success. Their Lord gives them good tidings of mercy from Allah and approval and of his gardens for them wherein is enduring pleasure. They will be abiding therein forever. Indeed, Allah has with him a great reward. O you who have believed, do not take your fathers or your brothers as allies if they have preferred disbelief over belief. And whoever does so amongst you, then it is those who are the wrongdoers. Rabbana la tuakibna inna sayna laqanna. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama matu wa ladina min qadina. Rabbana wa la tuhamna ma la tuqatadna bi wa huwanna wa tfirina wa hamna. Anta maulana khalsun ahla al-kawm al-kafirin. Our Lord, take us not to task if we forget or fall into error. Our Lord, lay not on us a burden such as you did lay on those who have gone before us. Our Lord, lay on us a burden which we do not have the power to bear and overlook our faults and forgive us and have mercy upon us. You are our guardian and grant us a victory over those who disbelieve. Become a new brother.